Hello, and welcome to Backseat Gamer, the show that asks the question, when you're in the dark, do you feel like a hostage? I'm your host, Michael Riley. With me is Dane Fortune. What song is that? <clears throat> uh, that would be the song Hostage by uh, Nothing But Thieves. Also joining us is Jason Amherst. I, I'm just blind in the dark. Uh, blinded I'm... by the light. <laughs> Revved up like a deuce. Another rumor in the night. I'm just blind pretty much any time, regardless of luminance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so Mike's Michael like this piece of news. Okay. I don't know if it was Jace who posted it on Facebook or somebody else. But they're apparently doing some kind of a uh, remaster, anniversary, Blu-ray release of MXC, Most Extreme Animation Channel. Oh, nice. That is pretty sick. And um, it's going to be released in two volumes. Nice. And I wonder if the uh, the episode uh, uh, Mascots versus Monsters will be in there. Well, from what I understand, these two volumes will be very close to a full release of all the episodes, barring a few that can't be. Um, yeah, I would imagine the released. Halloween episode with Ultraman. They won't be able to release that because of rights issues. They weren't even able to release yeah. it the first time in full. Because of rights. I mean, issues. granted, granted, who's publishing it? Uh, b- did Captain Baloney Pants? I don't know. I actually don't know. I didn't see all the specs. Let me see here. Uh. Mm-hmm. MXC coming to Blu-ray. Uh, oh, uh, Discotech licensed it. I'm not familiar with uh, that. Nope, me either. Um, uh, well, Discotech, as as uh, my friend Mario puts it, uh, they are doing the Lord's work as they have been. Uh, actually, uh, I, I don't know if you got it or not, Dane, but. Uh, they were the ones who did the Blu-ray release of Bo 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 Bo. Oh, okay. Uh, they they take uh, they take older things that are out of print, out of license, and re-release them. Um, they've done all sorts of series ranging from Samurai Pizza Cats, both the original Japanese and the English dub version, uh, ranging to currently like even Metal Heroes shows. Uh, you know, that uh, VR Troopers and Beetleborgs were based off of. Um, it says here, um, the announcement was made at Otakon. Uh, 51 episodes on SDVD, uh, which is standard definition on Blu-ray. Uh, volume 1 is the first three seasons. Volume 2 will follow later. Uh, extras have yet to be announced. The two volumes together will make up the entire series minus a few episodes due to licensing issues coming this year. Uh, They also announced uh, the acquisition of the anime uh, GTO Great Teacher Onizuka, the live action hour in high school host club movie and more. Oh yeah, no, they made a lot of announcements because uh, Android Kikaider, uh, they managed to get a few of the licenses from a uh, Hawaiian television channel that had a few translated tokusatsu shows back in the 70s kikaider and kamen rider v3 were among them so those are coming to blu-ray um that you know that's actually very interesting you can always find you can always rely on the strangest places well i'm not really saying hawaii is a strange place i guess what i mean is broadcast wise 
Yeah. Um, it's kind of like finding episodes of Doctor Who that have previously been lost. It's, it's kind of interesting, actually, looking at all the little, uh, all the stuff that's coming out. Because a lot of odd Japanese live action movies and stuff, too, are included. Um, damn, just, what a freaking list. Giant Gorg, uh, which was an 80s uh, movie. Uh, no, TV series. Um, I, I just like the title Giant Gorg. Uh, GTO, uh, the entire series with updated subtitles and the original Tokyo Pop dub, apparently. I think they also put out the Blu-ray release of uh, the infamous Ghost Stories anime. The one that was a uh, gag dub. Well, Ooh, what's... Keiko Kamen, live action trilogy. What's the point of doing a release if you don't have the gag dub? Exactly. Ooh, Kite. Uh... Ke All three versions, uncut, you say, U.S. general. Did you say Keiko Common live action trilogy? Yes. All I, all I ever wanted was to, to see a masked superhero's breasts just jiggling about as she's fighting enemies. Bingo. <laughs> well, listen, Mike is a man of very few needs. That's correct. And one of them is watching jiggling breasts. It's true. Uh... Let's see. You what know else me very well. Um, oh, uh, Professor Layton and the Eternal Diva. Uh, finally getting a Blu-ray release in North America, subbed and dubbed. Uh, which is kind of cool because those games are really popular. Yep. Robo Geisha, uh, that movie that was originally released by Funimation, they rescued it from obscurity and it's getting a Blu-ray release. Complete with Funimation English dub. Sweet. Um, and more tokusatsu stuff. Uh, Space Sheriff Scheider, uh, which was used for VR Troopers, actually, season two. And Special Rescue Police Winspector. Um, yeah, wow. That's they, they made a lot of great announcements. So, <laughs> so praise Discotech. <coughs> Billy also just sent us a ridiculous selfie. Well, isn't that something? Billy Carter sent a weird selfie of himself. Hmm. Well, how about that? So over so as we record this, it is the thirteenth of August. Correct. Over the weekend, yep. I went to the New Jersey Horror Con. How was that? Good old um, you know, I got to tell you, I had very low expectations because I've heard from more than one source that the expo center that I went to is kind of like very dilapidated, but it, it was fun. There was a lot of, there was a lot more people there than I thought would be. Um... I have a video up about my adventures there. <clears throat> um, well, you know, it, it's, it's a strange thing because the theme of the event was reunions. Because, like, they had a reunion of uh, Monster Squad. Right. And Turn of the Living Dead. And for some reason, Revenge of the Nerds, even though that's not a horror movie. Um... Got to meet some very interesting celebrities. Uh, Curtis Armstrong, kind of a dick, but I mean, like, well, let me back up. I wanted to try and do like, I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I wanted to try and do a like a small little skit for the YouTube video, and I asked Curtis Armstrong. He would, nah. No, no, I don't want, I don't do things like that. Just like very like, oh, uh, okay, okay, snot, whatever. But Donald Gibb, on the other hand, was very accommodating. And that is why he's a man among men. The guy is 70 years old and he still looks like he can break you in half with his pinky finger.
Okay. Wow. Um, amongst amongst other wacky things that happened. Okay, so do you you guys are familiar with the Mystery Science Theater episode where they did Squirm? Mm, not offhand. I I don't remember it, it off the top of my head either. Basically, a killer worm. Um. So I, have the, been, I have been described as such. So the guy who directed it, his name is Jeff Lieberman, happened to be there. Okay. And it was one of those things where, like, I mean, I'm sure Jason will know what I'm talking about, that phenomenon where when you're at a convention and certain guests just don't have the lines that other people do, and they're kind of just yeah. sitting there like, like it, like it, like the Virgil treatment, basically. Oh, they they steal money from you and then die without repayment. Well, that wasn't quite what I was going for. <laughs> so I walked over and you know, like, oh, hello, Mister Lieberman. You know, big fan of your work because you know he did. Uh, he's done a couple of. Uh, interesting movies you know he did uh just before dawn and um blue sunshine a couple of other movies where you go oh he did that movie okay so you know oh yes you know nice to meet you so i said to him so let me ask you a question what what were your thoughts on the MST3K treatment of your film, Squirm? And he he launched into this, you know, spiel about, well, you know, I didn't care that they made fun of the movie. I just cared that I didn't get any money out of it. Like, you know, the rights deals. And as he's talking to me, he's munching on nachos. And it was a say it, don't spray it kind of thing. Chunks of tortilla chips and cheese just flying in my general direction. <laughs> uh, Mr. Lieberman. And I, I really was supposed to be like, say it, don't spray it, please. But, uh, yeah. yeah. It really was, ugh. I'm just like, dude, you're getting fucking nacho cheese innards on my face. Get out of here. <laughs> This is the worst OnlyFans ever. Oof. <laughs> you know, um, and Mike will appreciate this. Okay. So as I was going around to the different uh, tables where the celebrities were, there was one guy... Uh, his name escapes me at the moment, but he was the mummy in Monster Squad. Okay. And it, it's just like, ah, okay, you know what? That's cool and all, but I've never seen the movie, so I just, I don't have that, like, sense of fanboy joy. So as I'm looking at his placard, I see an image of the sloth victim from Seven. And I was just like, wait, that was you? Wow. And he just he just smiled and went, yep, that was me. He just, let me let me tell you about my old fatty days. <laughs> well, he told me he was like so, well, I, I told him this the part where you start convulsing in the bed and pe after pe when people thought you were dead scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. So he was just like, I, I saw it in the theater. And when that scene came up, everybody fucking screamed. Even I screamed. Even I was scared. And I, and I remember making the damn movie. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, mm-hmm. And um, 
another thing that I learned yes. was that according to Curtis Armstrong, he has never watched an episode of American Dad. Like, ever. Because I was, <clears throat> I was talking to him, like, you know, one of my favorite moments from Snot was uh, it was a Halloween episode where they're going trick or treating. It's like, oh, Snot, uh, is this your costume? Are you supposed to be a gymnast? No, I just came from gym class. That's all. And I told him this, and he was just like, I, I hate to tell you this, but I don't remember any of the scenes that I record. I've never even watched the show. I Whoa. they they send me they send me the scripts. I record them in my own recording studio, and I send it to them, and they give me money. But all right, ain't no uh, shame in that. Must be must be a nice gig. I mean, I listen. Wish I had that gig. I could do that gig. Listen, I, I don't fault the guy for not watching it. It's like, you know, it's not a, it's not one of those things where you go, how dare you, Curtis Armstrong? I uh, just, it was just like, a, oh, that's actually, that's, that's kind of interesting to learn. Boopity bop, whoa shit. Boopity bop, whoa shit. <laughs> this is the uh, <laughs> second and final episode of the second expansion for Quake. In case anybody's out there wondering, there's only two more, uh, two more expansions after this, and I think they're both single episodes. So, okay. I've never encountered. Oh, is these are these boss enemies? You defeated Quake's guardian, that's, apparently. That's what it said. I mean, bully, bully to you, sir. I mean, okay. Where, where are? Where is they? I don't know. That's a good question. We are in Elemental Fury 1. This, this is the name of this level. <coughs> Watch for falling yep. rocks. Hmm. Thanks for the hint, game. <laughs> That's oh, like playing. Oh, friggin', ah, friggin, er the friggin' earthquakes again. Like I said, I know this is Quake, but Jesus Christ, I'm not touching the keyboard right now. Oh, I'm pie, Jace. See you, Jace. You're not touching the keyboard. Nope. Sure ain't. What? I'm getting moved Are around you? by an earthquake. I don't think it's gonna the stop. Power? I think I'm going to have to just like, try to move move through it. I think that might be what you have to oh do. Oh my lord. Okay. Like this wouldn't be tough. This Oh shit. Like this isn't hard enough without the quaking. Oh, it's a quake for goodness sake. Is there a way to stop these quakes? No. Not to my knowledge. Welcome back, Chase. Motherfuck. Hmm. Ah. Uh, Jesus fucking Christ. This should not hey, be so. Don't don't you have accoutrements to float? I, I, yeah. I'll just fly. Here, go fuck yourself, game. Only three more to go. All right, cool. Well, he's an end nice. I'm just saying, nice. sometimes mo I'm just saying, sometimes modern problems Require need modern solutions. Dick fuck solutions. 
Dick fuck solutions. That's my that's my poor name. I'm I'm also part of the uh, one of the greatest linebackers in Chicago Bears history, Dick Fuckus. There we go. What the fuck was that then? It's a spawn. Spawn. Yeah, there's the second one. Did you spawn? John Lake Wazama was in that movie. He was. He played Violator. That's right. He sure okay. did. And he, he did all sorts of wacky, silly things. He played Luigi. Now I, now I'm no expert on things, but what in the world was going on with that casting? Two Italian plumbers played by a Latino and a British guy. True. You know, speaking of which, the lady who played the who played the Princess Daisy or in that movie was yeah. actually there as a guest. Oh, nice. That's pretty cool. Also, you know, you you want to know who else was there? Who else was Linnea, there? Linnea Quigley. Oh, the, the woman who dances naked in the cemetery in that Day of the Dead movie. Yeah, Return of the Living Dead. Return she of the was living trash. Dead. She was trashy. I'd, I'd have fucked her. Well, I heard her, her name is Trash. Right. Like I said, I'd have, I, I'd have done her. Right there in the graveyard. I don't yeah. care. Mm -hmm. I have no shame. Yeah, um, I don't. I wouldn't. Totally. I don't watch Keiko Kamen because I'm an anime fan. I'll tell you that much. Listen... <laughs> I mean, would you would you stop to do her if there were zombies just walking around? Uh, possibly not. I would pick her up, uh, wrap her around me, and then do her while I was running from the zombies. Uh, I don't know. I mean, those zombies are pretty pretty tough. They, yeah, um... they would they would have an advantage since we'd both be naked, no weapons. Oh no, the zombies bit my wiener off. Oh no. Well, I'm coming and uh, going at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, Miss Quigley. Anyway, Miss Quigley, I saw your boobies in Returning the Living Dead. They were very nice. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, I've seen your boobies in, in quite a, a substantial yeah. number of movies. I mean, actually, now that I think about it. it it, it, it would take shorter to name the movies where you weren't naked. True. I, I mean... Uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night, you were naked. Yeah. Uh, uh, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, naked. Yep. Uh... Night I mean, of the Demons, I, I believe you were naked in that one, too. I mean, in fairness, have you seen and her? She's fucking hot as shit. I would have just cast her as a nudist. She's just been True. no clothes, no need for a wardrobe designer, nothing. Naked! Just keep her, keep, all the keep, clothes keep her naked the whole movie, even if it makes no sense. She's walking down the street, butt naked. Mm-hmm. Naked. Oh, there's still one more switch. Shit. Uh, all right. For for what it's worth, ladies and gentlemen, she is on cameo. Oh. If you if you if you want to drop a hundred dollarinos. 
Think I could get her to do a naked cameo? I don't think so, Tim. That probably goes against Toss. Uh, yes. Oh, that's fair. I believe they reserve the right to refuse your request if it's something like horrifying. Well, that I don't know that that would be considered horrifying. Hey, Linnea, let me see your tits in a video. Mm. Just rent night of the living dead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> bust another, little does he I'll bust know. another that movie again, sure. Little does he know I wasn't in night of the living dead. <laughs> Whatever, Return of the Dead, fucking naked woman of the dead. I don't know. <laughs> naked woman of the dead. Starring, starring Leanna Quigley. As naked woman, your your balls will be turned to shreds. No, she's well armed. She's just naked. Well, I mean With your no balls, clothes on. That's right. Your balls will be turned to shreds because you've been jacking off so much. Too. That's fair. I would have. Uh... We ended up pulling a Fred Willard there. Hey, whoa, okay. Uh, I'm Fred Willard, and... Um, I jerked off in a movie theater. Mm, now I know how P.B. Herman felt. Yes. Okay. Mine was an adult theater, Francis. You were watching Mr. Popper's Penguins, probably. Yeah, that the penguins were sexy. No, I, I was saying that to Fred Willard. Not, not. I know. And I was as well. Uh, you know, I, can you imagine being in an adult theater? You know, you're minding your own business. You're watching Shaving Ryan's Privates or whatever movie. And you look over and there's Fred Willard just... Jacking, jacking off, just like, oh my god, is, is, is that I Fred mean, Willard? I would feel like I was in a Fred Willard movie, and in true Fred Willard movie fashion, he should start having a conversation with me while b masturbating. Hmm. Ah, uh, you know, jacking off makes you younger. Did you know that? That's why I'm doing it uh, right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now. Now, as you can see, uh, the veins in my wiener are really, really pronounced. Which they're pronounced means... veins. <laughs> um, I loved you in Best of Show, Mr. Willard. Thank you, thank you. Uh, my character was named Buck, and speaking of Buck, I am fucking my wiener right now. <laughs> Speaking of Buck. I was in the movie Idle Hands, and right now, but my hands are not really they're idle. Far they're far from idle, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I was in the movie Chicken Little, and right now I'm my chicken is far from little. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus. My chicken. I just made this. I think I just made myself sick. As far from little. You can't, oh, you can't make this one up. I was in a movie called The Yank. <laughs> I don't think we have to even go any further with that joke. <laughs> kind of speaks for itself. It's true. Hey, it is too. I was in a movie called Planes, Fire, and Rescue. Um... And I'm jacking off right now. <laughs> <laughs> not, uh, not all these movies have a clever way to get to a masturbation joke. Everybody's doing it, doing it, doing it. <clears throat> I 
I had another idea for a scene showcase scene oh. for me and for me and Mr. Riley. Okay. It's it's called this scene is just four pages long. Okay. And the premise is it's it's it's, it's a lot of fourth wall breaking, basically like, hey. We're in a scene right now, and I don't mean to alarm you, but this scene is four pages long, and like, there's some kind of big problem that has to be addressed, and we we're, we waste time arguing about what's going on, and finally, at the like the fourth page, it's like, okay, here's the problem. What's happening is, and that's it. <laughs> That is hilarious. It is high, Larry No. 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 Were there, Jace, were there some perpetrators in the in the vicinity? No, I, I had to. Uh, I had to masturbate. I had to. Shut up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm just trying to have some fun. Yeah. God, why are you gonna be so hateful? You fuck. It, it <laughs> <laughs> People masturbate at work all the time. What are you talking about? <laughs> that's why. That's why I wasn't allowed at that Denny's anymore. That's right. <sighs> They gave you a grand slam and you started swinging for the fences. When I worked at McDonald's, he said the milk, the uh, the frosty machine was broken, so I was gonna make them my own frosty. A mouth frosty. No. Um, <laughs> Uh, we might have the name of this episode, but that's kind of disgusting. What, Mouth Frosty? Yeah. Mouth Frosty. Mouth frosty. Crab people. Astronaut. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Uh, unpopular opinion. I enjoyed the Borderlands movie. Okay. <laughs> Extremely popular Seriously, opinion. Seriously, like... I, I enjoyed Deadpool and Wolverine. Now it's time for a good idea, bad idea. Good idea. Saying you enjoyed a Marvel movie. Bad idea. Skull fucking your sister while you enjoy Marvel movie. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> I beg your fucking pardon. Is it not? A, do you not think it's a bad idea, Dane? It's not so much I don't think it's a bad idea. I, I guess it's more just the extreme in 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 of it. <laughs> the extreme in 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 You know, everybody is free to enjoy. Oh, really? Thanks. I'm going to buy one right now. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if you're not going to take this seriously. <laughs> the, the ducks at the park are free. No one can stop you from taking them. That's true. This has been vital information for your everyday life. It really, I feel very bad because it, se it seems like they were really putting an effort into Borderlands. and they, they were trying to make this a hit movie. But it's just. It, it's, it seems like it's going to have Pluto Nash kind of numbers. Because I'm seeing like uh, it was like a hundred and ten million dollar uh, budget, and the box office numbers are just not. <laughs> oh God, no! It, it it failed miserably. I like the and, text on uh, that button, by the way. You've opened several doors. I, I have a feeling that it's going to be one of these things where, like, years from now, people will look back on it and go, "You know what? It wasn't a bad dad movie. It was kind of fun." You know, like, 
the way that people look back at like Street Fighter with Raul Julia or the Mario Brothers movie, you know, like I mean, they don't look back fair, on it and go like, it wasn't that bad. To be fair, I feel like the only saving grace of the Street Fighter movie was Raul Julia. It's it's like how the only saving grace of Borderlands is Jack Black and uh, uh, freaking. I'm blanking on the name. Couldn't have been that important. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it's because I'm at work. I can't think and drive at the same time. <laughs> you think, you drive, you lose. Yep. Oh, oh no, you're, uh, Jamie you're, Lee Curtis. You're, you're going headlong oh, yeah. into a tree right now. What are you going to do? Don't bother me. I can't think and drive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God, goodness gracious, Eli Roth. Great balls of fire. Uh, I mean, he admitted that, like, he had no clue about what the games were about and any kind of real interest in the franchise. You know, he was just collecting a paycheck. You know what? At least he's being honest. You know, just being meanwhile, honest. there are a lot of people who are like, you can't make a PG-13 Borderlands movie. What about the violence? I'm like, the violence isn't integral to Borderlands plot or enjoyment. Like, yes, you can blow people's heads off with a gun. It's a shooty game. But that isn't integral to the game. Like, say, the violence is to Mortal Kombat. Now, if you were making a PG-13 Mortal Kombat... Yes, you could probably get the story beats, but you would be missing a large portion of what makes Mortal Kombat Mortal Kombat. Correct. Borderlands is more about the sci-fi and the story and, you know, the characters and less about the violence. The violence is just a byproduct of the game genre. That is true. But, but people are like, you can't do Borderlands PG-13. It's like, please... Like, Borderlands is a borderline Guardians of the Galaxy story, and that's kind of what they turned it into. Now, a group of misfits goes together, finds Alien Vault, you know, evil corporate guy tries to do things because of Vault. You know, like, the first, the first game didn't even have that much of a story. You were literally just Vault Hunters on this godforsaken barren planet. Like, they freaking post-scripted, like, 75% of that game's story in the second game. Did you did you see the movie? Yeah, I saw it opening day. Oh, uh, okay. No, but, like, but, like, they freaking, they basically took plot points from Borderlands 1, 2, and a tiny sprinkling of the pre-sequel threw it in a blender with some of the most hackneyed freaking uh, you know cliches that the Writers Guild of America could slap together and uh, went ta-da here's a script <laughs> like, it was fun don't get me wrong I enjoyed it it is a solid popcorn flick it is, refre it is refreshing to see a movie under two hours with no sequel baiting. Like, hmm. even the original fucking Mario Brothers movie baited people with a sequel, like, little stinger at the end, years before the MCU was doing that shit. Well, I, I suspect fully that the original Mario Brothers movie, they thought it was going to do gangbuster numbers, so it's like, all right, we can yeah. tease a sequel. And then when it underperformed, it's like, oh, whoopsie poopsies. <laughs> whoopsie doodles. Fuck. It's big, it's big Bertha in the Boom Boom Room or whatever the. Uh, big Bertha at the Boom Boom Bar. There you go, the Boom Boom Bar. The Boom Boom Bar. Everybody's at the Boom Boom Bar. The Boom Boom Bar, the Boom Boom Bar. Everybody's going to the Boom Boom Bar. You know, I 
I will die on the hill that the Mario Brothers live action movie was a good movie. It was entertaining. Um, yeah, even if it wasn't like a hundred percent faithful to the source material, I enjoyed it as a movie. Yeah, I think in that respect, it to me, it was a success. To me, to me, the bees. All right, the you hit the bottom of the bee. Uh, we're, we're playing the wrong game for that. <laughs> That's the, other, that's the other playthrough we're doing. <sighs> so now this whole this whole yeah. thing with that Australian break dancer. Yeah. The the plot is thickening. Oh my god. Okay, so for those of you who were not aware, Raygun, um, I believe, is her name. Something like that. She was a break dancer who was in the breaking competition at the Olympics. Was is the key word here, I think. She was. Um, her performance was. It was a thing that happened. Um, it was incredibly odd. It was just. It, it was. Stinky, for lack of a better word. She Stinky. scored... Uh, the, the kangaroo kick? Uh, mm, uh, let me put it to you this way. Out of all the possible points, she scored nothing. Not, none of them, yeah. Absolutely nothing. I award you no points, and may God, God have mercy on your soul. soul. Well, you know, a simple wrong would have sufficed, but okay. So, afterwards, she gave an interview where she was basically like, well, I was just trying to do something unique to catch the uh, uh, judge's attention. uh, Oh, you sure did. You sure caught their attention, all right. They were like, I mean, she supposedly has a PhD in the culture of dance or some weird bullshit. Yeah, I'm sorry. This this lady is the Australian equivalent to Rachel Dolgel or whatever the fuck Dol- she's calling Dol- herself Dolzel, now yeah. in the United States. Dolzel, Dolgel, I, I think it was Polish. I mean, but yeah, Rachel Polish. Now, Got she's it. Call, like she's calling herself something like Ubuntu or something. Oh, <laughs> so, she used to, she, it up. Was she installed on another operating system? <laughs> Well, it seems like this was now the narrative is that this was a quote unquote social experiment. And the Olympics ain't a place for it, especially at the one time breakdancing was going to be a part of it because it can't afford to be in it for the next two more Summer Olympics. AKA, this was so bad, we're just not doing it. Yeah. Well, I think that part of it, and a few people brought this point up, was the fact that it's quote unquote improvised. Like the songs were complete surprises to all of the people involved. And so they had to do it on the fly. And the scoring system was incredibly vague. It's not like, say, figure skating, where specific moves are awarded a certain amount of technical expertise. And then like, honestly, if they could nail down what a scoring system for break dancing was like, you know, where it's scored as like a cross between gymnastics and figure skating, you know, they could keep that improvisation in there. And I think it could work, but like, they yeah. don't have enough eyes on it as a sport, and they you don't know, have the budget to push for it to continue being a sport. When I first heard that it was going to be the Olympics, I was just like, are you sure about this? And then when I heard that it was going to be mostly improvised, I was just like, are you really you sure know, about this? 
Like, here's the kicker. I actually was watching it live. The uh, the qualifiers. They booed the judge's decision at one point. The American won over like the Japanese person uh, on one of the rounds, and that Japanese guy was spinning on his head like the damn Beyblade. Like this guy was way more impressive, and somehow the other guy got it. And literally at the end of that round, you could hear them trying to turn out the booze in the freaking recorded broadcast. It was like, yeah. the you know, crowd did not agree whatsoever with it. You know, um, we are now post twenty twenty four Olympics. Yes, yep. and I mean, I I can't speak for other people, of course, but I when it comes to the Summer Olympics. I'm only interested in a couple of things. I like the track and field, uh, basketball, and that's kind of it. I mean, like, there's certain things where it's like, oh, uh, equestrian, yay. Oh, canoeing, rowing, fantabulous. Oh, boy. Breaking. Woo. There's just some sports in the Olympics where you're just, you're, no matter what, even, even with the pageantry and the majesty of the Olympics, you're just, you're not going to get eyeballs on. Like, I don't meanwhile, know. 2028 has announced flag football and squash have been approved as first time additions in Los Angeles. Uh, while baseball, softball, lacrosse, and cricket will all be added after various lengths of absence. Lacrosse has not been an Olympic sport since 1908, and cricket was only contested once in Paris in 1900. You know, I've heard a lot of people saying pickleball. They should try and get pickleball. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the sport that middle-aged frigging, you know, white people seemingly adore. <clears throat> oh, so I should like it then. You know, now that you, uh, now that you say it like that, yeah. I guess I better go play, start playing pickleball. It's, uh, cause, cause, like, I see it a lot where I live to the point where an old skating rink was turned into a pickleball place. Wait a minute, I am a middle-aged white guy. Hey, so the no, next no, no. newest I'm, we're we're talking we're talking like fifties middle age. The newest event for the Olympics for twenty twenty eight tag roller fucking. <laughs> uh, baseball was a permanent sport in nineteen ninety two and then dropped after two thousand eight before returning again to Tokyo for twenty twenty one. Cuba won three of the first four gold medals. U.S. interrupted the streak in two thousand in Sydney. South Korea and Japan have won the previous two golds. Hmm. Um, Olympics officials expected to remain... Confu confused but orange. Yes. <laughs> Softball was in five times, most recently 2020. Japan won its second consecutive gold medal. U.S. won the first three. Speaking of U.S. just sweeping, you know, sports... How about that women's basketball team? Eight straight gold medals. Listen, it was that their their gold medal game against France that was a uh, nail biter. Mm. Well, yeah, that one point. Holy crap! You know, you know, leave it for the country that invented most of these sports, these modern sports, to keep winning golds. It's like <laughs> we invented it, so we win. Well, you know, I will say this. A lot of people used to love to watch, like, the Dream Team beat teams by, like, 60 points. But I think it's a lot more dramatic and interesting when it, it is a close game. So apparently boxing might not be back, though. Well, that's because they're apparently uh, the... Uh, they want the... 
whatever association. The International Boxing Association uh, has failed to address finance and governance reforms and has not been involved in the last two Olympic Games. I will say, though, the Algerian boxer, Imani, uh, when she won the gold medal, it's like, yes. Justified in freaking suing X. She's suing, huh? Good. She's she's going after Elon and everybody else. So Rowling, freaking uh, Logan Paul, like names are being dropped and X itself is also getting sued. Good. Sue those fucking, those two fucking clowns, Rowling and uh, Logan Paul. Uh. Also, I love the fact that Logan Paul uh, seemingly was also punished for his comments by getting stripped of the U.S. title. Well, at, lose, uh, losing, it. losing it to L.A. Knight and losing it to L.A. Knight earlier so than basically planned. Getting stripped of it. So here, the story <laughs> goes. The story goes that WWE told him, like, "Hey, can you like knock that shit off?" And Logan Paul apparently threw a gigantic man baby tantrum like, Oh, you're trying to censor me. Oh, I thought this was America. Fuck you. So WWE was like, uh, okay, you know what? You're losing your fucking match at uh, yeah, SummerSlam. Yeah, now. No, how about now, yeah, how about fuck you? <laughs> That's what that was. <laughs> how about you go fuck yourself? Uh, you guy. <laughs> Congratulations. You played yourself. Congratulations. You fucked yourself. Yeah. No, it's, it's beautiful that he lost that belt. It was just... <laughs> uh, get lost, loser. It's, uh, t- take your freaking shitty Prime sponsorship and, uh, you know, walk away from the WWE and defeat just like Ronda Rousey did because she couldn't fucking, handle the and take wrestling that fucking biz. clown Machine Gun Kelly too while you're at it. <laughs> no shit. Uh, you know... I was hoping Kevin Owens would come out and power bomb him off the stage again. Well, I mean, between <laughs> between all these that rigmarole and Logan Paul being exposed as a fraud on YouTube by Coffeezilla. Oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> there, there was that, and then on top of it all, like there's the shit going down now with Mr. Beast. It's like, wow, like all these YouTubers, like. You know what? You you had the massive swath of YouTubers retiring, and those that didn't retire are now getting caught up in controversy. And you just go, ooh. <laughs> and just is, think, is this uh, is this chance for uh, new content creators to rise up and uh, take their places in the algorithm? And it, you know, it's a funny thing. People were, all these people were trying to cancel. Mr. Beast for years, and now it's like, oh my god, it's actually working now. <laughs> and then, uh, man, speaking of backwards ass social media, how about the fact that, uh, one, the only freaking ads that he can get on his platform right now on, on uh, Twitter are freaking Republican ads because he's just dug himself such a massive grave by pissing off every other sponsor out there. I mean, he literally ads. said, all you sponsors can go to hell and take a hike. We, I don't need you. And then, and then they left. And then they left, <laughs> and he wants to be all shocked <laughs> Pikachu. Uh, I thought this was America. Uh, I thought this was America. No afraid of the Spanish trail. I love how he's trying to blame like freaking uh, uh, hackers for the fact that his interview with uh, Dumpty Trumpy uh, didn't go too well. Oh my god, I just... The, the technical issues and everything. From what I understand... Uh, it was... right. I agree with everything you say, Orange Man. From really... I feel like if Muskrat could have reached through the screen and started filleting Trump, he would. Oh my God! Just every everything about the whole thing—it's just like 
No, please, please don't tax me in my millions. Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> hey. Donald, Donald, remember, I, I support you. I support you, Donald. Uh, Donald, remember. Donald Trump is turning into the elderly person who's, you know, significant other that they used to sit on a park bench has passed away. And now he just sits there arguing with no one. Oh, uh, uh, Biden, wait away. I miss you, Biden. Come back. Well, now... Um, you can't leave me all alone. The the right the right wingers now, and it in an attempt to save face after the whole couch fucking thing. <laughs> they're now the big thing now was oh they're now actually uh, fucking couches. No. Tim Walls drank horse cum. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so did Chris Pontius. And it's What's like your point? <laughs> well, basically. It's like when when the couch fucking thing happened, it just came about organically. And the reason why it had momentum is because right wingers were getting so fucking worked up over it. It wasn't just that. It was the fact that the person who initially posted it posted it with no context and fake page numbers to make it look like it came out of his book right. they made it look legitimate mm -hmm. right wingers have nothing to go on and no way of making it look legitimate because walls doesn't have a book or anything like that That's right. <clears throat> what, what, That's what right. is with these people admitting to ridiculous things that they should not be admitting to like shooting I just, dogs. I just find it hilarious how after all these years, all it took was just saying, you know what? You right wingers, you're fucking weird. <laughs> and that's what sets them off. Well, at least we ain't as weird as them. True. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Backseat Gamer. If you like what we do, please hit subscribe and be sure to hit the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. For Dane Ford Jones and Jason Amherst, I'm Mike Riley saying see you next time. Good night, everybody.